L'Oreal admits a mistake and CrossFit CEO pays for his. I'm Jeff Beer and this is Fast Company's brand, Hit Miss of the Week. The miss this week goes to CrossFit. On June 6th, in response to the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation tweeting that racism is a public health issue, CrossFit CEO Greg Glassman replied, it's Floyd 19, apparently comparing the death of George Floyd to the coronavirus. It was also reported that after a CrossFit affiliated gym owner suggested they make the company issue anti-racist statements in support of Black Lives Matter, Glassman resisted and called the gym owner delusional in an email for her suggestion. Between the tweet and the email, the backlash against Glassman and CrossFit was swift and significant. More than a thousand gyms said they'd stop using the CrossFit name and top athletes began boycotting the CrossFit Games. And on June 7th, Reebok announced it was ending its exclusive 10-year partnership with CrossFit. On June 9th, Glassman told gym owners on a private Zoom call, quote, we're not mourning for George Floyd. I don't think me or any of my staff are. He also asked a Minneapolis gym owner who had questioned why the brand hadn't posted a statement on George Floyd's death in the protests, can you tell me why I should mourn for him? Other than that, it's the white thing to do. Other than that, give me another reason. Now, on June 10th, surprise, surprise, Glassman announces his resignation and retirement. Now, the odds are good that many of CrossFit's loyal fans will be re-examining their own commitment to that brand. Now for the hit, we have L'Oreal Paris. Back in August 2017, model and L'Oreal Paris spokesperson Monroe Bergdorf posted a comment on Facebook about unconscious racism in the wake of the Charlottesville protests and white supremacy marches. The brand, however, fired her for it. At the time, it reasoned that her comments calling out white people were, quote, at odds with its mission to support, quote, diversity and tolerance towards all people, irrespective of their race, background, gender, and religion. In the wake of her firing, Bergdorf was highly criticized by UK media, and L'Oreal remained silent. Fast forward to June 1st of this year, and there was L'Oreal Paris joining the chorus of brands denouncing racism and encouraging people to speak out. Well, Bergdorf, rightfully, was having none of that. She called out the brand, saying, where was my support when I spoke out? I'm disgusted and writing this in floods of tears. So far, you may be asking yourself, wait, why is this a brand hit? And you'd be right, because so far, the brand's behavior has been pretty damn awful. But here we get to the point where a brand in this position can do one of two things, stubbornly defend a wrongful position, or it can admit its mistake and honestly try to make amends. L'Oreal smartly chose the latter. On June 9th, Bergdorf announced that she'd been in touch with the brand and that she was accepting a consultancy position on the brand's UK Diversity and Inclusion Advisory Board. While tied up in the complexities of business, too often brands can abandon common sense when trying to rectify a bad move. Here, L'Oreal thankfully followed advice that millions of parents tell their children every day, that it's not the mistake that matters most, but how you deal with it, what you learn from it, and how you apply that lesson to your life. That's it for now. Let us know your hit and miss picks.